some time ago, some months ago, a new microcontroller came to the market. It is this one. There were two main reasons to take a closer look to this. The first is it's really cheap. So this Wi-Fi connected, which is the next, which is the second reason to take a closer look to this is costs less than five euros for a board like this and less than 10 for a board like this. Big difference between both is the number of inputs and outputs. Here you have two, and here you have, ah, as you can see, you have some more. Okay. Uh, for me, this was a reason to take a closer look to these boards, and so I ordered some. And to connect to this, I needed an FTDI comp uh, USB serial port for Windows 8. And I found out that the software, the firmware, for this board is a little bit okay. It's not my my kind of software that I would suppose to get. It's an AT command driven serial board. Hmm. Sometime later, uh, some people created a new kind of firmware for this, and this is a Node MCU, which is the name of this. This is a port of the of the language. Lue, and they have some extensions specially for this kind of board. I'm not familiar with this language, so I tried to find a nice way. And a nice way to work with this is to have a, an IDE, something for development. I'm familiar with an Esperino board, which is a JavaScript microcontroller um, created by Gordon Williams and so I took this editor which ex already exists for this board and tried to convert it to talk uh, with this ESP8266. Status of this software of this development right now is sometimes it's alpha status, sometimes it's better status, and sometimes a little bit better. And to give you a first overview, yes, yeah, stay in this video. What we have to do first is to connect to the serial port of this microcontroller, and uh, this is connected using a COM port. So we select the COM port, and we are already connected to the board and we get the first information back the size of the heap. If you want to do something more let's start easy with some code snippets that are available in the background. Let's go to the heap one more time and you get this. Oh, there's a minor change. Great. Uh, or let's go to memory, etc. Okay. To know more about this commands and how the snippets are done, we open a project folder. Project folder points to a folder on your local drive, which has a lo lot of subdirectories, and in the subdirectories we have information about your projects, about your kind of snippets, and some other stuff. So let's go to the snippets, and what you see here is heap, the snippet for heap, at the end sends this command to the board and displays the feedback. Same for the others. If you want to create your own snippet, do it with this one, edit, and that's done. Um, projects. Also projects are in this local folder. and This is a nice project. I'm just working on this. I want to control this kind of LED, which is really nice to do. So if I want to send this command to the board, I only have to click here. And right now nothing happens. I don't know why. Can I do something like this now? Oh. There was some kind of... Oh, yeah. This was my fault. 
I send only this is what I selected. If I want to send everything, I have to put here and as you can see, source is running to the board. If you could see my matrix of these LEDs, you would see now that everything is in color 5. Color 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one, which is great. Okay, this was one of, of these applications that I already have. Not that fun. Let's go to this one because you want to see a little bit more about the options that you have in this web IDE. So, there's a simple test. Um, from time to time, before sending this to the board, from time to time, you should clean up the board. This is my experience of that. So, I click on this one, restart. So, I send the restart command to the microcontroller. And I see this, this is disconnected in the same moment. So, connect again. We see that the heap is in a beautiful size and we copy this to the board now. Everything is done. But we don't see what happens on the board. For that, I created some testing routine. This is a testing environment which is a starting environment and let's load kind of that I already created in the background, this is display types and you can see the so-called RE schema um, we have two options to watch for the data one is more formula oriented and one is this let me say image oriented uh, let's first switch to the formula and what you see here is um, a chart. There's no data in right now, but we will start. And this is a list of data that will be shown in this chart. Let's start this. And you can see the change of data. If you take a closer look to this uh, source code, you will see it's counting up. And counting down when it when it comes to the end. Let's have with them. Um, if you want to see how the image is running, select on this, and here you have different kind of of user interface elements. This one, for example. This one, the bar, a number, and there are some others in the background also. So these let me say LED line or the color change because you are in different areas or this traffic light system um, let's go back let's first go back here and now let's go back to this one there was one uh, part that we didn't talk about this is the files um, the board itself has the option to send files uh, to the microcontroller which can then be called from the, from this board directly there's also one of them which is called the init.loa and this one is started on power up oh by the way the testing you remember that you have seen this, this before is still running and let's switch it off. Okay, done. If we want to send, for example, this one to be stored as a, as a startable file on the uh, microcontroller itself, go to files, give it a name. Load it up. This is the upload process. You see the information, file is uploaded. And if we open this one one more time, go to files, this is the one. If I want to start this, we use this button, de delete this button, and one more option, if you want to compile this to bytecode before starting, we use this button. 
So, um, to control everything, oh, let's let's clean this up, the terminal part of the window. To control everything, we have a lot of information in the background. This is the settings part. First of all, credit to a lot of people that created something which is used internally. For example, there's Blotly. Oh, we'll talk about Blotly later. jQuery, one of the beautiful things. Code Mirror, one more, etc., etc. So, if we want to see something more, we go through all of the stops. And this one is uh, the question do we want to see large icons or small icons, etc. Communications. We are communicating with the board, with the microcontroller, microcontroller, with the speed. And there's some other parts that could be helpful during debugging. Project. I was talking about having a local folder, and this is the address of the local folder, where I have all my project data. I can select one on wherever I want. So I also could have different project folders. Minify, uh, this is one of the parts which is not really helpful right now because there's a limitation in the application itself and the firmware itself and this is a line length of 256 characters. Let's wait and see how we can bypass this. Sound, uh, maybe you remember that you have seen some messages like connected somewhere here and if you want to listen to this and want to get a sound when something happens you can switch it on and off this way. Testing there is a plugin used for the testing and this plugin needs to be activated before we, you can use this. Last but not least documentation. Documentation is always a good thing so this documentation is more or less uh, a lot of addresses that are found in the internet. So let's go back. I was talking about the Blockly. So if you want to work with Blockly for this, uh, you can take this way. Between us, I did not check this yet. I'm not a fan of this. It's not my world. <coughs> okay. Another world is JavaScript. I'm much more familiar to JavaScript than to Lue. And I found um, a compiler for that. So this is JavaScript code. If you want to have this JavaScript code in this new language, at least new for me, click on compile. You see what, what the compiler is making out of this. Copy this to the code and here it is. So it's available. By the way, this is uh, commands. Okay, we got a short one now. What's going on next? Our next steps will be to make it more comfortable in some places, more robust. There are still some problems. These problems are created by the firmware itself. So, for example, running out of memory eh, causes some crazy things. And there's nothing like catching errors. At least I didn't find it yet. Okay, let's find a way to bypass this. Uh, some more thing. This is the first video. I will create some more, which go in, into the details of this. And let's wait and see what else we will get. Okay, that's for now. Thanks a lot for listening. If you want to work with this, by the way, you can use this web page, as you can see here, to download the Chrome application to your uh, computer. Sooner or later, I will add this to the store, to the Google store for applications. That's for now. Thanks for listening. Have a good time. Bye.